Hello and welcome back to another CPA exam journey related video with special guest Mikey. <laughs> Mikey's my dog, but um, he wasn't supposed to be in this video. It's just the weather's really nice and I'm trying to take advantage of being out in the sun, but I might move the video or I don't know. I might leave it there, but again, I'm just sitting in a weird spot as I usually do. I don't really have a set location when I film these type of videos. I kind of have to just try and find where no one else will hopefully barge in as some people are, but some dogs. Um, so with this video, I think I need to update you guys on what happened since the last one, which is when uh, I talked about how I did not pass audit my first time. And so just to get right into it, I did not pass again the second time. Okay, I did not pass again the second time, but I actually got a 71, so not too bad, just not obviously where I needed to be. And there's some pretty obvious weak areas that I found back on my score report. So um, I'm just gonna talk about the mistakes that I made, so hopefully you guys don't make the same ones. And then also what you guys, or what, not you guys, what I am going to do, um, what, I, what I've been doing to try and pass the, sec, the, third, the third time, not the second time, because that's already in the past, but um, with the second exam, the biggest mistake that I made was not focusing on my weak areas, even though that was sent back to me through the score report. And the score report, if you don't know, is what you get in the mail if you failed an exam. And for audit, there's four sections that are listed and it will show whether you're weaker, comparable or stronger compared to other candidates. I think that's how they score it. Um, so I had an evident weak area in particular, and maybe one that was one or two, maybe one that was comparable. But um, so with the, uh, with the, so I didn't focus on my weak areas because I think with Becker, it's really hard to hone in on where those weak areas are, you can go and enter a single chapter in Becker and basically the topics that are discussed in the score report are just kind of all across the board within each chapter. So I found it really difficult for me to have uh, just a structure in my study plan to tackle those weak areas. So instead of doing that, I ended up just doing sets of cumulative multiple choice and rereading the book like I had done for FAR. But I think with FAR, I even focused on my weak areas. And I think because I was a little closer uh, to passing the first time, I didn't think I needed to do that. But uh, you do you do need to do that if you want to pass at any section of the CPA exam, as I know now. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is that it, this kind of can become a trial, trial and error type situation if you don't figure out what you need to do to pass. Um, that is something that I did talk about too in my first video where you can't just take someone's advice verbatim. You need to figure out what works for you because chances are what works for you isn't gonna work. What worked for someone else is probably not gonna work exactly for you. We're, we all learn differently. We all process information differently. Um, some of us like me, as I now know, you need to really implement all sorts of learning so that by that I mean just reading the material, writing them, writing notes, so writing the material, um, like listening. Uh, basically, I try and implement every single source of learning that you can experience um, into my studying at some point so that I can, you know, try and learn even if it's even if it doesn't seem like it's helping, I think subconsciously we are soaking up that information subconsciously. Um, so with uh, my, uh, so let me try and make sure I'm being organized. So I talked about failing my second attempt and what I did wrong. So with my third attempt going into my third exam now, which I haven't taken yet, um, that's coming up in a couple weeks. I'm trying to take it right after Thanksgiving. So the timeline, I think, yeah, is about two weeks to study. So this time I'm trying to be a lot more uh, deliberate about the way that I'm studying. And I did some research on what other people have done who didn't pass even the second time that, they take, that they've taken a section of the CPA exam. And 
Uh, so some of you guys may have heard of Ninja. This isn't monetized, but I did purchase Ninja, which is a six, right now it's $67 a month to purchase a subscription to one section, I think, of any section of the CPA exam. Uh, I think if you want to do more than one, you have to pay again. But I just paid for audit, and they have stuff like notes, audio, a book, lectures, questions. So kind of like Becker, but I would, for me personally, I'm probably going to use it as a supplement rather than replacing Becker because I still think Becker is good. I just think that I had trouble organizing my week areas with it. But what I do really like about uh, Ninja Multiple Choice is they can lay it out by, they actually lay out their multiple choice questions by topic. So they have four topics in audit, just like the AICPA score report. And so my, for example, not, it's my example, but uh, I was weak in the third section, which I don't know what that is called again off the top of my head. But uh, my strategy this time for tackling my third attempt was, so I purchased Ninja, I rewrote all of the notes that they have by hand, and I'm trying to re-read them again at least five times before taking my exam and again going through the flashcards that I made for when I took audit the first time and adding to it if I need to, um, just based on topics that I didn't seem to understand the first time or the second time. <laughs> um, but so I talked about the notes, I talked about the flashcards. So the third component that I'm implementing are the multiple choice questions from Ninja. And I'm going through my week area right now. So I'm doing 100 questions a day of my week area until I score over an 80% in that section, just because if I score over an 80, I can probably assume that I will do uh, well enough on the real exam so that it wouldn't drag my whole score down. And uh, after I've done that, I will do a cumulative set of 100 questions and see what's dragging down my cumulative score. And if it's section three or if it's a different section, whatever it is, I'm going to do sets of 100 of that section, the week section, until I get over 80% again. Uh, before moving on and just rinsing or repeating that cycle and once I have mastered what would be my weak areas that I've found in Ninja and what is showing up in my score report I'll then go ahead and just keep doing sets of 100 questions a day up until exam day so that I stay fresh on all of those topics and I think so far it's been really helping um, I think some of the questions that I saw on Ninja were actually on my previous exams, at least maybe from the first one. And it sucks seeing, you know, the questions that were on your exam that you got wrong. But also, it's really cool. I, maybe cool is not the right word, but it's really helpful. And again, this isn't monetized, but I do think from now on, I'll be implementing Ninja as a supplement, as a review supplement to all of my exams, because um, like I said, the biggest mistake that I made in taking a section again is not really, really honing in on my weak areas to begin with. Maybe I did it in my second attempt. I don't quite remember, but if I did, it was way too late for me to do it at that point to where it wasn't actually helping me improve my score. So I think that's all I have to say about that. I'm, I'm probably going to make my next video about what happened after implementing these changes, but at least the what I can say is that if you feel weak in any, any area, just definitely tackle that. And one thing that I've learned is to try and change up what you're doing. If Even if it's uh, just, if you're getting bored, just change it up. If you need to read out loud, that's a way to change up your studying instead of reading silently. Um, I know it keeps me awake <laughs> reading the audit book, which can be pretty boring, but um, if there are any other videos, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can leave off as a, just like a final note of anything, but I think I pretty much hit all of And that. obviously I'm not, um, like an expert in the CPA, but I just hope that I'm giving honest, uh, valuable advice that might help you prevent from making some of the mistakes that I've made, but I at least hope that I learn well I know I'm learning from mine so I know it's helpful for me but I just hope it's helpful for anybody watching but again um, I'll see you guys in the next video